Hey everyone, uh, thanks for watching. I got a great show for you today, but before we jump into the show, quick reminder, if you like these interviews, I need a couple of things from you. First and foremost, hit that subscribe button because it tells me what, uh, what you like. Uh, but second, um, you know, keep sending those referrals, keep making those introductions. I'd love to talk to people who you would like to be interviewed. And today's guest is actually a friend of a friend. Uh, and that's, that's what we like, right? Real estate business is a people business. Lots of people are doing great things. So if you, if you have anybody that would like to be on or if you'd like to be on, just reach out and let's set it up. So uh, this morning I have Alex Ottawa with me, who's a friend uh, of Dewey's. Uh, and Alex, you're out of Tampa, right? Is that that view we have behind you? Yeah, correct. This is downtown Tampa. Uh, that doesn't suck. Downtown Tampa, big old high rise. You must be what, on the 40th floor or something? Uh, yeah, this is the penthouse. It's 34th and 35th. Oh my goodness, the penthouse. I feel so bad for you. It's just rough. <laughs> well, um, you know, what, what we do on all our interviews is why don't you just quickly introduce yourself, what you do in the business, and, the, and then we'll jump in. Okay, cool. Yeah, so my name's uh, Alex Ottawell. Uh, I was born in England, moved to the US uh, when I was 10. I uh, buy and sell rehab houses. I also do some uh, private lending to people. Uh, they can't always afford to pay cash for my places, um, properties that not necessarily are easily financed uh, through bank institutions. That's what I do. Cool, Alex. So let's, let's uh, lot, lots there to jump into. Um, so why don't we talk about the flip side first, and, and then we'll talk about the private lending second. So um, first, where, so you just invest, I'm assuming, around Tampa? First off? Yeah, so, I did, so I, ever since I started the business, um, I always – wanted to avoid heavy competition. Yep. So I've always invested outside, like the main, the main county here in uh, Tampa is Hillsborough, and then Pinellas is to our west. Those are the top two in the area. Um, I've always stayed clear of those and kind of pushed out to the more rural areas where uh, people um, don't necessarily, you know, you don't have as much competition and you don't run into as many investors. That, that's, again, that's such a simple thing to do. Um, but is genius because, you know, I don't know Hillsborough at all, but if it's like all the other metros, everybody wants to be in like these little pockets. And when I mean everybody, you know, it's, it's hundreds, if not thousands of people bidding on maybe 50 assets. And then, it, you know, deals get skinny or become non-profitable really quick. But if you just open your eyes and go, I don't know, 45 minutes outside that, all the, all the competition goes away and you're like, where'd everybody go? <laughs> Is that kind yeah, of like my radius is about a hundred miles. Okay. Um, I try to stay within a hundred miles. Back in the day, I was I was definitely driving a lot more. These days, we kind of have it systemized to areas. But I target one area for a period of time and then swap to a different area. So I'm not having to drive all over the place. All right, let's let's poke at that a little bit. So when you say target an area, that makes me think you're doing mailers or cold calling, or you basically you sick an amount you you turn a, uh, resources onto an area. You hit it for, I don't know, 90 days, six months, you get what you get and then you move on and then you may come back later. Is that kind of right? So I've actually never done any traditional uh, marketing strategy or, uh, strategies, uh, never mailers. Uh, we did some bandit signs for a bit, stuff like that. A lot of the stuff I used to buy, you know, if I track back, um, I used to go really heavily into tax deeds mm. and uh, we were always at the auction house. You know, this was back when tons of properties were coming up, you know, it's not yeah. so much the case anymore but uh when we initially started i was always going after tax deeds so i would kind of go after a couple of counties at a time and then build from there at one point uh at the peak uh i think we we're doing nine or ten county tax deeds that was getting a little excessive just because of the drive factor and uh, i've always had in-house crews fixing up the properties so when they have to travel so far you know your, your gas bill i think one year was like it was around fifteen, sixteen thousand in uh, fuel. So it just kind of doesn't always work out very well doing that. So we tried to limit it down, and now I just kind of target two or three areas at a time, and then move on if I find it's becoming a little stagnant. Yeah. So so let's just define move on or the time frame, right? So are you in? Are you in a? I'll call it an area. I'm not really sure what to call it for six months at a time, or is it a year? I mean, how long no. are we talking? I definitely re-hit the same areas. Um, yeah. It's just more, it kind of just goes into almost coincidence at times. Like I'll, I'll, I'll buy one in an area and I always end up buying two or three more in that area. <laughs> and then 
Um, you know, we hit that for a while, and my guys get used to driving that same pattern. Yeah, for, and they, they like it, especially if it's close to their home. Uh-huh. But yeah, I mean, I I always buy anything. Um, I just these days, like I said, I'm just trying to narrow it down where I'm buying because I was I was buying a lot in an area called Newport Ritchie. Um, it's just it's just an area where you just can't make the margins anymore, and yeah. um, I find I'm a bit more strategic with the areas I attack. Yep, it becomes uh, a bit more profitable for me. Good for me. you. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely does. So let's talk about what you're looking for. Are you are you just a single family house guy, or do you go after? No, no. I've actually always been a bit more um, open with what I buy. You know, I, I try and find value in things that other people don't. So, you know, then I can create a margin where nobody else sees. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the main things I go after is actually mobile homes. Ah. Um, not necessarily in a park. I never uh, really like to buy them in parks because of the, the fees and the lack of land value because you don't own the land. Um, mm-hmm. But what I tend to target is uh, double wides, newer than 1999 on a one acre lot. Um, I really don't mind if the trailer is completely trashed because uh, you know, we, we can pretty much fix up anything. Mm-hmm. But I, I like to go after those because you tend to get those at a really cheap price initially and once fixed up and FHA approved, um, you know, we get a, a nice little pretty penny for them, especially in this market. Yeah. All right. And then um, let's talk a little bit about tax deeds because I don't know what it's like in Florida. Is Do they have, um, you know, a 90 day window to reclaim or once you buy it, you own it or what, what's the deal? Yeah, well, once, so the, the way it works is um, and a lot of counties, honestly, in Florida aren't even doing tax deeds anymore. Oh. Um, initially they went from live auctions to online. And now a lot of areas have just dropped it completely. Um, it's just, they're not coming up for sale. I guess a lot of investors are targeting the people prior to going to tax deeds and, and they're, uh, you know, pulling them off the, off the list. But whenever, uh, whenever you have the sale, you have 24 hours to pay for the, uh, pay for the property, you put down your 5%, you have 24 hours. Once that final payment's made though, uh, the property's transferred over to that new owner. There's no, uh, no recourse. Yeah, no recourse. There, there is some cases. I, I've had one uh, where the um, the bank had, or the lady was going through bankruptcy. It was filed incorrectly, and uh, I bought the property. And then about a week later, they cut me a check back and took it back. But that's just because the county had made an error. But um, that's not something that typically happens. Yeah. So you don't have a some some places I talk to other investors are like. You know, I got to hold it for a year and a day. You don't, you don't have that in your market. Yeah, I think, I think Indiana does that. Right. There, there's some. Yeah, I would never buy those doing that because it just sounds like a nightmare. But yeah. Uh, I uh, no, the, the tax deeds here are pretty straightforward. I mean, you can you got a couple of different options. You can quiet title them, or if you hold it for a long enough period, the cloud goes away on the title. Uh, but like I said, that, that's kind of something I tracked away from just because. It's dried up. I yeah. mean, we uh, we had a we had a gravy period. I remember when I was starting out. Um, cause I, I've been in the business nine or ten years now, roughly. And I kind of uh, to give you a back history. I started off with my dad. He had um, he had gone through you know the downturn like everybody else. Lost all his money, mm-hmm. um, you know, a few million, and um, he just started buying lots uh, at the tax deed sale. He didn't know what the hell he was doing. Neither did I kind of joined up together um you know, we were buying one acre lots in an area called ridge manor for like a thousand dollars a pop hmm. i came on board and i started trading those lots for cars and then selling those cars it was a it was a weird thing at the time but it worked and um that was back when nothing would sell so we were just trading right. stuff off and then hopefully uh trading up to a higher value and then after a while um i started uh, fixing the places up for them. We would buy you know, crappy houses, little trailers. Um, we were fixing them up together. Uh, did that for about a year and a half, two years. We worked together and then kind of decided we couldn't work together anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we have a very, we have a very similar personality and uh, very headstrong people. Yeah. Um, so I, I kind of, I borrowed some money uh, actually from my mother. She had gotten a settlement and uh, I borrowed 40 grand from her own very fortunate that she was willing to take a risk on a, uh, I was probably 20 at the time, I think. Oh, that's great. Risk and 
she loaned me 40 grand and I actually repaid her in a year. And, um, you know, now I've done some other things for her, but yeah. it's I built from there and I got some private investors some guys giving me some cash that I knew. And, uh, that's just kind of how I, I got started. Uh, yeah, that's, that's awesome. There's so much, so much there we're going to talk about, but I have one more question about, uh, what you sort of highlighted you do today, right? You focus on, uh, mobile homes, 99 or newer, double wides, one acre lot. Uh, help yep. us, you know, uh, help the individuals that think mobile homes and think, you know, I don't know what you want to call it, meth labs or white tr or trailer trash or whatever. I know that's not the case. I know lots yep. of people that make big money there, but let's just realize that not everybody knows that. Okay. So a meth lab, I've definitely had one. <laughs> I had one explode in the backyard of the property, left a giant crater. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that was an interesting story. But the uh, as far as trailers, I mean, you have to remember a lot of people coming into investments and they say, "Oh, well, I wouldn't live there. I wouldn't buy that because I wouldn't live there, or I I don't like that style or whatever." The fact is, somebody has to have somewhere to live. Mm -hmm. Somebody may like it. Everybody's taste is different. So I never buy anything that just because I wouldn't live in it, I'm not gonna you know not buy it. It just doesn't make sense. You have to look at it in the standpoint that everybody needs a home. Yep. So even if it's a single wide 1962 with, you know, shit brown paint, I mean, whatever the hell it is, I've done it. And, uh, you know, pe pe people live in it. I mean, people live in the most horrible conditions, sadly, but it's what they're accustomed to. Um, yep. Now, the, the stuff I sell these days is, is pretty quality. I mean, I, I buy it uh, typically roof leaks, um, you know, nasty, I don't know, fleas everywhere, dogs dog shit everywhere. I don't know if I can curse on here, but um, hopefully you bleep it out. But yeah, <laughs> so it's just um, in a nasty places. And, and I'll buy them for around 40000 Uh the, the acre is the, the way you can keep your, um, you, know, you have your value in your land. Yep. So regardless of the property, I always try and make sure the land value is equal or um, greater than what I'm paying for it. So at least I have an initial fallback if if the trailer has issues or I've had a case where a trailer got taken from the property afterwards. I bought it at a tax deed and they uh, came and repossessed the trailer with a tax deed mm -hmm. sale. Um, you don't get the trailer titles. So they took that trailer right off of there. Luckily I would bought the property with the value of the land. Yeah. Uh, so I was good there. But if you, if you, um, if you, if you buy something on an acre, nice little trailer on it, you fix it up, you create a, a home for somebody, you can always make value there. And yeah. you, you just have to look at, you know, I mean, like anything else, you comp the area, you see, what, uh, see what's out there. Not every area you're going to get top dollar for trailers, yeah. but I, I find if they have an acre of land or more, people genuinely want to live there. No, I couldn't agree more. And I asked that because I think it's a genius model. Um, I, I have a saying, and this applies here, just like everywhere else, is live where you want, but invest where the numbers make sense, right? So you're, you're, you're buying things at land value and there's an additional asset on there uh, that, you know, is worth something. And then you spend your sweat equity fixing it up, roof leaks, color, whatever you want, and then somebody will take it, right? And it sounds like you sell these, right? You, you sell them either FHA or maybe you owner finance them. Is that kind of the exit? <laughs> Yeah, so my, my uh, I always sell them on uh, FHA or conventional, whatever they'll, they'll okay. go. Um, the owner finance route I do, I try to buy stuff that is, um, I'll give you an example. I, I bought five acres in uh, Westy Chapel and um, you know, I, I bought it completely wooded, horrible, couldn't even get onto the property. And then I, I have a guy locally in town that comes through, uh, his name is Billy Big Rig. Anybody yeah. wants to use him, he's a good guy. Um, he comes through and he mulches everything. So he'll bring everything down to down to the dirt, leave the big trees, and that creates a nice uh, nice setting for the property. You know, it looks looks a lot more appealable. And I'll I'll try and get the initial down payment uh, to be close to what I have into it. So if I buy the property at thirty thousand, forty thousand, um, put ten into it. I'll I'll try and get that initial money back so that way I'm not upside down too much. And then when mm -hmm. I finance it out, okay. I have uh, you know, a giant upside. But the, the trailers where I'm putting a, you know, 80, 
70, 80,000 into, it doesn't make sense to me to finance them just because the upside is pretty small. Got you know, it. 30, 40 grand. I like to, like that, that deal specifically, there was a um, hundred thousand in principal plus another 150,000 in interest. So that, you know, that's a nice upside. Whereas uh, the trailer you're making 30, 40 grand on really yeah. doesn't have enough upside to hold the note. Okay. That's great. So you have multiple exits and, and uh, I'm, you know, given how good you are, I suspect, you know, what your exit's going to be the day you buy it. Right. It's not like you get to the end and go, Oh, what's going to happen now? Yeah. Well, uh, there's kind of two ways to go about it. I mean, I know if I'm going to flip it, I need to uh, bring it to a standard where, yes. Um, you know, it can be financed, but at the same time, sometimes I come into deals and I, I know that I can just kind of lipstick it. And uh, I just did that with a property that's four houses on three acres. I bought in Brooksville. You know, I could have rehabbed it for about 100, 100 110. Um, but I, honestly, I made almost the same amount of money just putting paint on it. Right. So, I mean, you know, th this isn't anything new. This is uh, most flippers know. But um, I, I try and always address things on the first day I look at them. Yeah. You don't want to. You don't want to go too heavy into a rehab and then realize you're, you got no exit. Yeah, exactly. Very cool. So I am curious about two more things about today. Uh, you said we a few times, which I think is awesome. Means acknowledging the team. You've talked about the contractors you have on staff. Uh, it, it, are you kind of a one man show looking for deals and, and securing capital or is there a bigger team around you? Um, well, I mean, I, I have uh, five private investors. Yeah. They give me cash, but they're, you know, pretty hands off. Um, yeah, I always use the word we just because on the phone it sounds better. Uh -huh. um, honestly, I'm I'm uh, I'm the background of everything. Uh, okay. You know, this year we're probably probably going to shoot for seventy or seventy five deals, and um, I plan to bring on uh, an assistant to help out with that. But as far as my my crews and stuff, they've been with me so long now; they're five or six years in. Um, you know, I've got three crews, and and they they work well, so I don't really have to supervise that much. And on the the, the only thing I really do is the acquisitions. Right. Everything else is kind of streamlined, but yeah. Uh, All right. Yeah. So, you, so you're doing 75. Well, what did you do last year? So you in, in 2018. Last, last year we did less. So I think it was 50, 52. Our greatest, uh, the greatest year we did was 100 and, 112 properties. It was 2015. Jeez. Yeah. That was a that was a head case. That was a whole different business then because I was buying uh, much cheaper properties. You know. Yeah, five to twenty grand, and I was slinging them out. Um, I was definitely uh, pouring myself out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you would have to. I mean, just the paperwork alone would crush you. Yeah, um, it was. A yeah, so when you're when you're looking at your business in nineteen, so the year that just rolled over, you're going to do seventy five transactions. Um, what I'm seeing a lot of successful people do is they're they're looking for. I don't know if I want to say less deals, but higher quality deals, right? More margin in this market. Is that kind of where you are as well? Yeah, I've always been very specific with what I buy. I mean, I don't buy just to buy. You know, I find um, a lot of people will jump in and uh, kind of get excited. You see it at the auction all the time. Yeah. It, like anytime I go to an auction, I have a list of prices I'm willing to pay and I don't exceed them. I don't care if it sells for $100 more than, than what I uh, put on there. Good. You have to be firm with things because you can't let it be an emotional. I don't, I don't let money and emotions come together. That's awesome. But yeah, I mean, I've, I've got some, I, said, I, I like finding value. That's my main thing I want to take away from this. I like finding value in stuff that nobody else finds value in. So oftentimes I fight what, um, I fight what most people walk away from. You know, I've had EPA issues. I own a motel in North Florida. And uh, the EPA came down on me hardcore, tried to find me like a $10,000 a day on it. It was a gas station next door. And a lot of people just kind of walk away from that. And I, I always like to problem solve. <laughs> I ended up calling up the county and uh, realized that the, the lines the EPA was going off of, because they're pretty, pretty lazy people, um, they were going off the property appraiser's lines. And the lines were incorrect. So I called up the property appraiser. And I said, hey, your uh, GIS is wrong. It should be shifted up a little bit. So they said, okay, no problem. And they shifted it up, and I pushed myself out of the uh, <laughs> uh, for the gas tanks. There you so, go. Um, you know, but a lot of, like I said, I think the biggest thing people need to do is just not fear away from 
uh, problems because this is a problem solving business. The better you are at it, the more money you'll make. Oh, absolutely. There's, if, you, if you could get two skills in this business, number one is problem solving, getting creative, whatever you want to call that. And the other one is, um, you know, finding or identifying motivated sellers, which obviously a tax deed sale is. Um, I'm curious, I, sometimes I'm surprised by the answer to this question, but when you look at your business and I, I know it's hard to average, so maybe we'll do average for a month. How many hours are you spending kind of looking, looking at deals, trying to, trying to find the next things to buy? If, I'm guessing it's not a full-time job, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, hours a month, or a I don't week, really know. Whatever, whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, okay. So for a week, uh, probably around 15 to 20. Maybe. Yeah. That's what I would think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, a lot of, a lot of my time gets spent. I physically go look at everything because I'm closing on everything. So yep. a lot of drive time. If I, so some of my properties are an hour and a half away, two hours away. So it's quite a lot of drive time. It's more miles than it is actually research. I mean, I can go through uh, hundreds of properties in, in a pretty short period of time. Yeah. And when, once you train your eye, you can just, I, I've got key indicators that I know I look for and yep. if they pop up, I hit it. I mean, that's pretty much it. But obviously there's some deals that pop up that you, you need to put a little bit more time into, especially these tax deeds. I mean, I really, a lot of people go to the auction and, and buy stuff, and don't do any research. I mean, I physically walk every tax deed that I, I bid on um, because they're, they're the biggest nightmare. I mean, I've, I've seen people buy by condemned houses that got knocked down that day or trailers go missing, you know, yeah. or uh, properties that had a fire the previous day. I mean, I've seen everything. We've been at hundreds and hundreds of tax deeds. Yeah. I've seen some horrible stories from people just not spending the time researching. It's the biggest thing. You know, knowing, knowing what you're buying. I mean, you can't go back. Yeah. Yeah. Again, there's so much nuggets there. So first and foremost, right. You quote unquote trained your eye. I, I call that doing your homework, right? You got to go in, you got to look at, you got to, you got to spend the time, right? And it's repetitive time. And, and sometimes you don't think you're learning anything, but trust me, you look at hundreds, you know, today and hundreds tomorrow. And over time, you're going to be, you're going to be able to go through a big list in you know, 10 minutes and go, okay, yeah. I'm, I'm going to look at these 12 a little bit more and then ignore the other 176. Um, that, that's, that's what makes you good at what you do. And that's what all the newbies fail to realize. They just, they get distracted. Well, I have a lot of, I mean, I used to do a bit of, uh, that's how I met Dewey actually. I was teaching a class on land installment contracts and uh, for a local uh, RIA. And afterwards, everybody, you know, a lot of people have a lot of excitement about it. They get into it. They like the big numbers and everything else. But at the end of the day, it's, it's grunt work. You know, when I started out, I was working 80 to 100 hours a week to build the business I have now. And they don't want to do that grunt work. Uh, they, they don't want to put the effort in. They don't want to sit on the computer for hours and hours and hours looking for properties. I mean, even just the basis of comping properties, you know, uh, somebody said to me, how do I, how do I learn how to comp properties? So we'll keep doing it. Pick exactly. an address. Pick an address and just comp it. I don't care if you're buying it or not. You know, I have, I have four people on my acquisitions team. Um, I didn't mention that part, but I have four people that kind of scout for me. Um, I call acquisitions team. It's kind of like a bird dogging situation, but yeah. um, I have a, a structured uh, payout to them. So they, kind of benefits them. It's actually a pretty good system. I actually taught it to Dewey recently, but basically I pay, they pay for all their own signage, uh, all, all their own leads. And then I give them a basis uh, per deal. So I give them, like, let's say they bring a property to me. I say, Hey, I'll pay 50,000 for it. I give them 2000 bucks for that. And then for every uh, dollar they negotiate off, I give them 33% commission. So it's an incentive. So they get the, they get the two grand at 50 grand and then if they get it for 40. Uh, they get the extra 3,300 bucks, which is 33% of the negotiated discount. Nice. <clears throat> so it motivates them. Also, I make more money. That of works for me. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, I don't know. It's a little system I have, but those, uh, um, sorry, I went off track. It's okay. uh, what, was, what was the land installment contract? Oh, comping. So th these guys are the same thing. They, uh, they wanted to know how, how do I how do I know if it's a good deal, blah blah blah. So well, you just need to keep looking at it. Yeah. Keep looking at it. You'll know a deal when you see it. Exactly. The more exactly. you look at it. That's awesome. So that's that's exactly what you know. I I tell everybody and they ask and, and they they look at me cross-eyed. It, it's really that simple. I'm like, yeah, it's really that simple. Do the work. Uh, you know, put in the hours, uh, as Alex talked about earlier. So um, this has been a lot of fun. Let's let's rewind to the beginning. I'm kind of interested, right? So it sounded like your dad was in the business pretty successful and then got hurt in the crunch of 08 to 10. So, 
What my dad's always been a serial entrepreneur. He's had, and my mother too. Okay. Um, they've had tons of businesses. They had the largest cleaning business in, in Tampa Bay for a while. Uh, they got divorced, sold that. And, um, but basically my dad had a bunch of rental assets. He had a, like a little mobile home park area, and things like that. So he lost all those. Um, but he's always ventured into different things. We actually didn't get into full-time real estate investing until after I got out of high school and then okay. uh, he'd already lost everything. So this was kind of a new venture to him too. Okay. Um, we kind of did it together. I've always had pretty good sales abilities and, and really good numbers. So kind of partnered up together. So this That's is like, been- sorry, this is like 2010, just to put it in timeline? Uh, well, he started in 2008 and I started in 2009, okay. right after high school. Um, I did go to boat mechanic school, which was a horrible idea. Um, <laughs> so I, I thought I was going to be a mechanic and uh, I was pretty, uh, yeah, I went to that, did that for a few months, but I was also doing the flipping at the same time. We were buying stuff. I was, I bought a, I remember the first thing I bought was a trailer in uh, Paisley, uh, which is Lake County. It's the middle of nowhere. And the property had a lady that died in it, but she, she used to make um, doll molds. So she make she take the doll doll molds and make dolls out of it. And they all had we found hundreds of them, and they all had names on them and their faces and their hands. It was the most creepiest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> um, and that was that was the first property I started with, and that was while I was in the tech school. And uh, when I got out of it, we did the boat mechanics. I broke my kneecap. Oh no! Uh, I kneel down for a while. And I got into fixing them with that. And then, like I said, we, we've had some crazy, I've got some crazy stories. I mean, dead bodies, and dead, yeah. dead everything. Yeah. Horrible stuff. It's, it's, been a, it's been a wild business, especially when you get into the auctions. You know, a lot of people see these cookie cutter shows, you know, <laughs> flip or flop or yeah. wherever they are. But yeah, I mean, the, the stuff I've dealt with is, is pretty horrible. I mean, people pulling guns on you, I mean, especially when you buy them at auction. They don't like it when you go tell them you got to move out. Yeah, exactly. Uh, That's probably gonna... go, Yeah, I physically go to the properties, knock on the door, and I've gotten surrounded by people. I mean, all sorts of fun stuff. And um, that's the part of the business that people don't teach. They don't show you what happens when, you know, this, this crackhead woman picks up her kid and puts it in your face and say, this is the man that's throwing you out of your house. You know, I mean, like, there's some horrible stuff to this business. I mean, we've had we've answered the doors to guns being pointed at us. Like I said, I've gotten surrounded in the hood, cars pulling up, all these guys getting out. You know, very crazy stuff. Um, but you can't teach that. Yeah. I, don't know how you teach that. I can tell stories, but I can't, I can't really teach that. It's just something you have to go through. Yeah. Well, you know, the the part of this, and again, it's this is a people business. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, sometimes when you're in a people business, there are bad days, right? I tell people all the time, this business tests you all the time. Yeah. And, and it tests you so much those first couple of years because it wants to kick you out. I fundamentally believe this business offers so much upside, right? Let's a guy live in a penthouse in, in Tampa, but you've got to go through, you got to go through hell, right? You got to go through the, the bad days to get there. Yeah. And, um, you know, you only are where you are because you got through them and you just kept moving forward. Yeah, I, I think, too, the other thing is people just don't want to jump in and grind. I mean, <clears throat> there's a lot of investors, I, they kind of always have the same story. You know, you initially start out, you grind the hell out of it, you put some systems in place, and then everything smooths out. But, you know, until the, the ones that drop out are the ones that aren't willing to grind. You know, I, I, was, I met a buyer at 10 o'clock at night at McDonald's in the hood. I mean, I just don't care. Right. Like that, that's the kind of guy I am. I still will do it. I mean, if people, I, I'm still hungry. I'm always hungry. So. Yeah. Uh, plus, I got too many damn bills to pay for now. So yeah, amen to that. <laughs> I hear uh, you. Yeah, I mean, you just gotta, you just gotta go after what people don't want. If it's something somebody else doesn't want to do, then there's money to be made because yeah. less people that are interested in it, the more chances are you're going to get it. The more chances are you're going to be able to negotiate that down more exactly. or create create an extra value. In it. Yeah, and again, it's obvious, but I'll ask it anyway. You make you make your money in this business when you buy it. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, and, I mean, yeah. look, look at that four houses on three acres. That was a fantastic deal. I bought that because there was a heroin addict living there. Nobody wanted to deal with it. He was threatening everybody, and uh, I paid thirty grand for it. Okay, uh, for four houses on three acres. I just have it under contract right now for one thirty-five. Um, you know, I all we did was paint it, <laughs> paint it, clean the trash. Wow, that's a fantastic deal. Um, but that's because nobody else wanted to deal with it. 
I went in there and said some choice words and got rid of the guy. So there you go. uh, But yeah, you'll be be in that deal total time of 90 days. What do you think? Um, I think I remember when I bought it actually, it was probably a couple couple months ago. So yeah, maybe 90 days, 90. I mean, most, most of the time is honestly just waiting on my crew to be ready to, to pick it up. We sold it within two weeks. I put it, I actually put it up for owner financing. So originally, um, I wanted to own a finance. I put it up for, a, that's an upside I was speaking of earlier. Right. So if I, I bought it at 30, I was into it maybe 35. There's a large upside on that deal. So when I want to finance that out, if I put it up for 180, uh, 30 grand down, I'm getting my initial back. And exactly. I'm, able to, I'm able to take that 150 uh, principal and expand it on eight to 10%. Now I'm making another 150 on it. Now that just became a $300,000 deal. Yeah, um, and if you ever wanted, you could sell that note, raise capital. I mean, you have lots of options at that point. Yeah, you, you, you definitely leverage those. I mean, I have a couple of investors that buy those for me. I mean, obviously they want a bit of a yeah. piece on the end, but I don't care personally. I mean, and that, that's another thing you can do with a, a property that's not very sellable. I've had properties where I couldn't, I could sell them for 10, but I could finance it for 20 with two grand down. So exactly. what I do is I'll, I'll finance it at the 20, and then sell the note for 15, they make five on their end. And then I'm making more money on the property just based on the fact that I've, I've leveraged it with that note. That's, that's very, that's creative. That's awesome. So uh, I, I'm curious where this is going to go. So where are you taking this business? So you talked about doing 75 deals this year. Um, yeah. Do you have a plan? Are you just going to be steady Eddie and just do this the rest of your life or what's um, up? So, so the difference is I had a little bit of a ripple in 2016. So a lot of people that know me know I got I got really bored ah. after doing all those deals, and I decided to open a hookah lounge. Oh, uh, don't ask why. I came back from Japan. I just dealt with a bunch of service businesses, and I said, "Hey, I'm going to open a hookah lounge." I had a buddy that opened one before. I didn't want to do a bar because they're kind of costly. I think I, I spent seventy five grand opening this place, and uh, it took a lot of time. I didn't realize how much time service businesses take. I was there every day and it kind of trashed my real estate business for 2016, to be honest with you. Um, It just wasn't, I wasn't doing the deals. I still made decent money because my dad helped me out a bit with uh, keeping some deals in operation, but it was an insane amount of time I put into that place. And it's not been very cost effective. I wouldn't recommend it to anybody unless you want to buy mine because it is for sale. (laughs) Um, But uh, (laughs) um, yeah, so I, I, I think, I think what I want to do now is instead of working in my business so much, because I still think I do. And I, I, I have a lot of friends, big players in Tampa that I know, and uh, they definitely don't work in their business as much as I do. Um, and, and that's not a bad thing. That's a great yeah. thing. Yeah. I just need to systemize more. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to bring on somebody uh, where I can trust, uh, put into place, kind of handle 50% of what I do, and then, and then bring on some other people to do the rest. Very cool. That's my goal. I mean, I want to scale up. Um, I'd like I'd like to get into wholesaling a bit. I've never actually wholesaled a property. We've done, done a little over 600 properties now and uh, never wholesaled anything. And I, I kind of want to do it. Um, I know it's way late in the game and everybody else has done it, but I, I kind of want to put together uh, some sort of uh, you know, little, little office, yeah. uh, people and stuff. Just to try it out. It's not necessarily. I mean, I know there's guys like like Raphael Vargas. He's he's spending a, a fortune on yeah. marketing and making a, making a fortune. Um, I don't want to go to that level, but I definitely want to uh, experiment with it. Even if it's not for now. Even if it's you know if we have some sort of correction, which does seem to be the foreseeable future, I'd like something that's a bit more um, recession proof. Yeah. So so a couple of things you mentioned there um, that I talk about a lot. And I saw this a lot in 08, so it's, it, it happens, right? You, you, you get very successful, you do it, you do it, you do it, you do it, and then you get bored. Um, you know, in your case, you opened a hookah lounge. I've known, a couple, I've known some people own sunglass huts and all these other stuff. Um, my word of advice there is check yourself in the mirror. Keep doing your business. And, you know, if you want to go take a month's vacation, go ahead. But typically don't... <laughs> Don't, don't try to uh, diversify your business into something completely well, different that you don't know. I don't think, I, I think that was actually the thing. So <clears throat> leaving high school, 
um, I went right into almost, you know, right into real estate. Yep. So I never really ventured out into anything much more uh, like, like a 180 side of the business. I, I, it was kind of a test to see yeah. if I could do it. I know it's an expensive test, yeah. um, but it was kind of a test to see if I could do it. And I, I created it. I mean, it's a great place. There's nothing wrong with the place. Yeah. Uh, everybody enjoys it. You know, it's a, it's a nice spot. But uh, I think there's cheaper options to, to uh, kind of test your abilities. I just yeah. didn't. Uh, I just didn't go that route. There you go. Uh, yeah. yeah, and then uh, you know the other thing is is um, you know you've been wildly successful. Six hundred deals. You know, with with a track record that, that makes you think. I don't see why it would change going forward. I, I am curious. What is it about wanting to do something else? In this case, wholesaling that excites you? Is it just the quote unquote different aspect or do you really see how it could leverage other parts of your business or what do you think? Well, I, I think a lot of the deals I get offered to me, I tend to waste. Um, okay. And I think there's so many properties. I mean, I was actually talking to my dad yesterday. Um, because, you know, we still collaborate or like I, I bought a deal. He went to an auction, uh, it's way far away, but he went to an auction that, uh, he, he just didn't want to buy the property, so I bought it. I mean, we, we still kind of go back and forth through each other. And he, and he was saying, I mean, back in the day, there was there was so many properties that we wasted. That yeah. we and we went to the auctions, and nobody uh, bid on them, and we could have picked them up, and we didn't. And it was kind of a uh, case now where I feel like the properties that I'm turning down, I could make money on them. I just can't make money on them in the flipping aspect. Got it. Uh, so you're so at, I, yeah, that makes sense. So you're adding a, a tool to your bag. Yeah. I mean, if I can make an extra, you know, two, 300 a year by just throwing out some, uh, you know, or putting out some deals that I necessarily don't want, then it's, it's a worthwhile ad. Um, I don't want to put a lot of time into it. Uh, it's something I want to kind of throw together and hopefully if it boosts up, it's good. If not, I'll, I'll probably leave it alone. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I'm adding, I'm adding staff. Um, Yep. A lot of times I don't even, I don't have a dedicated office. I, I, I'm thinking about doing that though. Cause obviously if I want to go into the whole sitting side, I need some sort of office, but it's, um, uh, right now I just work out of, you know, my house, coffee shops. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, cause you don't really need an office with what I do. I mean, I sit on, I sit on a computer and look at a bunch of properties and make a bunch of calls and speak to code enforcement. I mean, yeah. there's nothing really, uh, there's nothing really that exciting there where it needs an office, but I expanded the wholesale. I'm going to need that office. Yeah. Yeah. No, this, the, that makes total sense to me. And that's, you know, frankly, the best answer I could have hoped for, right? There, there are deals that come by your path that you know have meat on the bone. It just doesn't have meat on the bone for the last, similar to the 600 you've done to date. But hey, if you can make five grand because you can identify value and you have a buyer's list or a ready-made market, you're yeah. a fool not to. So adding that as an entrepreneur is a genius move. So nice. Work. Well, and also you bring people into the office and, and it allows you to utilize them for other things too. I mean, yeah. just because I'm paying them on one thing doesn't mean I can't, you know, utilize them for something else. Uh, yeah. I, I think, I think it'll be a good ad to the business. And, I, and honestly um, I say, you know, correction and things like that. Uh, one thing I want to add on is all the people are still investing in Hills and Ellis, things like that. A lot of the guys I know are dropping back and just wholesaling because they don't want to have any cash out. Yeah. Um, but I feel like the way my model is set up, going kind of further away, smaller counties, smaller areas, um, you know, the price points are smaller. I think it kind of keeps me reasonably safe from, uh, you know, excessive correction. I mean, obviously, if the market starts changing and things slow down and nothing's selling, um, I still have a decent margin in these places where I have a nice uh, exit strategy. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think if you, you're buying a, a, like there's an area called South Tampa, if you're buying a house over there for, you know, $300 a square foot and you're selling at 320. I mean, there's, there's not really much skin there where you can fall yeah. back on. Yeah. That's, yeah. It's kind of a, yeah, when I, yeah, when I'm telling people, I don't know Tampa at all. Um, but I tell people if you're buying or flipping above the median for your area, into this slowdown comma correction, watch out because that, you know, $20 a square foot in your example, that disappears in a heartbeat, right? I saw the 08 crash up close and personal and, you know, it, it, it wiped, you know, there's a couple guys I knew that were 10 million bucks or more and they were wiped out in nine months. 
yeah it, it's painful so well just just on holding costs i mean yeah. i uh, i have a different kind of setup with mine my my investors are on a fixed return um but they're it's, it's not like hard money it's a little different i don't know i don't know how to structure it or say it but um ba basically i just give them a fixed return quarterly and i can imagine that if i was uh, in an area where nothing would sell and I, I couldn't pay that giant payment I pay every quarter, yeah, uh, it would be a nightmare. I and mean, I can see, I can literally envision how, you know, a guy can lose it all in nine months. I mean, I, I haven't experienced it, knock on wood, I don't. But, yeah. Um, yeah, that's awesome. So I'm curious, as we wrap this up, I always turn it over to the guest where you can share anything you'd like. If you're looking for more investors or buyers or whatever you want or need, this, this is your, your chance to say how, you know, what do you want? How do people get a hold of you? Whatever you like, Alex. Cool. All right. Well, um, thanks for having me on here, by the way. Uh, so I'm buying in Pasco, Hernando, Hulk, Citrus, Hardy, DeSoto, Highlands, uh, I think I mentioned. So if you, if you have any properties there, I, I buy uh, single wide, double wide, one acre or more. Uh, those are the kind of properties I'm looking for. If you want to send them my way, I will buy them. Uh, they have to have land. Don't send me one's lots. Uh, ABD homes at yahoo.com. So, Very cool. If you guys want to reach out, let me know. Very cool. Well, Alex, I appreciate you giving a guy you didn't know uh, some time. This has been a lot of fun. I, I love to see um, you know, guys that have been doing this a while, very successful, always growing, learning. Uh, it, it's a lot of fun. This, this has been a great show, Alex. I appreciate your time. Sounds good. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. It.